Hi, and welcome to Banking Part 7. Today's lesson is checkbook balancing. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to do the following. You will understand the importance of a balancing a checkbook. You'll be able to understand the differences between an outstanding check and an outstanding deposit. And you will be able to balance a checkbook. Listen to me carefully. So what tools do you need in order to balance a checkbook? First off, you'll need a copy of your checkbook register. You'll need a copy of your most recent bank statement. And you'll need a reconciliation form, which is essentially a worksheet that is used to balance a checkbook. Are we understanding each other? So why balance or reconcile a checkbook in the first place? By doing this, it allows you to check your bank statement and your checkbook register for mistakes. Yes, sometimes banks make mistakes. And also, sometimes we as humans make mistakes when we enter information on our checkbook register. Let me explain something to you. I'm the only one who makes jokes. The second reason is it helps you maintain and be aware of your most accurate recent bank account balance. And lastly, by balancing our checkbook, we can be alerted early on if there's any identity theft to our account. So on this screen in front of you, you have three vocabulary words. It's important to know the difference between an outstanding check and an outstanding deposit, which are the first two words on your screen. I'm speaking! An outstanding check is a check that has been issued by you. You filled it out. You gave it to the payee, but it has not yet been printed on your bank statement. So why could that be? Well, let's say that I wrote out a check today and I gave it to a payee, but maybe they haven't cashed it or deposited yet. Maybe they were going to hold on to it for a couple of weeks. So if that's the case, that is why that check hasn't cleared yet, and by having it not cleared yet, it's not going to appear in my bank statement. Another reason is, what if my bank statement was just printed in the past couple of days, and that check just cleared? Well, if the bank statement was printed two days ago, and my check just cleared today, that would be one reason why it would not appear on my most recent bank statement. The second word on your screen is an outstanding deposit. An outstanding deposit is when a deposit has been made at your bank, but that deposit has not been printed on your bank statement yet. Okay, one reason. Maybe your bank statement was just printed two days ago and you just made that deposit in the past two days. Because it was just recently made, that could be one reason why it's not printed on the more recent bank statement. Our last word is a bank reconciliation form. I kind of explained this earlier when I said that this is a worksheet that's used to balance your checkbook. It accounts for the differences between the information on your bank statement and the information in your checkbook register. When both information are the same, your checkbook register has been balanced. On your screen, you have a copy of a checkbook register at the top and a copy of the bank statement at the bottom. Before you do anything else, check to see if the two balances are the same. Looking at our checkbook register, we have an ending balance of $41.89. We look at our bank statement, it has an ending balance of $75. Because these two balances are not the same, our checkbook is not balanced. So now we need to go forward with the process and begin balancing our checkbook. So why are these two documents have different balances? What's missing on the checkbook register that does not appear in the statement and what's on the bank statement that does not appear in the checkbook register. Well, on the checkbook register on May 14th, you'll notice that we wrote out two checks, check number 100 and check number 101. If you look at your bank statement, neither of these two checks appear. So those are two outstanding checks. We know we wrote them, but the bank statement does not reflect them yet. The next item is on May 14th, a deposit. This deposit of $30, we know we made the deposit at the bank, but notice that also does not appear in the bank statement below. 
When we look at our bank statement, we see one item that does not appear on our checkbook register. That happens to be on May 30th, we have an account fee of $10. It's not on our checkbook register, so that's another missing item. So now, let's start balancing our checkbook. So this form is a reconciliation form. We're going to use it to balance the checkbook. I've also taken the last slide and summarized the information and typed it up above. So now we can see there are outstanding checks, our outstanding deposit, and our account fee, so we don't have to flip back and forth from one slide to the next. So when filling out a checkbook reconciliation form, start at the top and work your way down. The date. The date is the day you are filling out your reconciliation form. So in this example, we're filling out the form on the last day of May. On the left side of the reconciliation form, it asks us to list our balance on the checkbook register. The balance on our checkbook register, as we saw in the previous slide, was $41.89. Below that, it asks us to list any bank charges. We had that one bank charge that was listed on our bank statement of $10. So we'll go ahead and list that $10 account fee. And then it tells us to total our bank charges. We only have one bank charge of $10, so that is the only charge we're going to list where it tells us to total our bank charges. So now we need to subtract. How do I know to subtract? There is a clue. You'll notice it tells us to deduct bank charges. Deduct means to subtract. So we're going to take our register balance of $41.89 at the top. We're going to subtract our bank charges of $10. And when we do that, we end up with $31.89. Now, on the right side of the reconciliation form, it asks us to list the balance on our bank statement. The balance on our bank statement was $75. Next, it tells us to list our outstanding deposits. We only had one outstanding deposit, and that was on May 14th, in the amount of $30. That's the only one we have. So when it tells us next to total our outstanding deposits, we only have one to list, $30. So far we've listed our bank statement balance and we've listed our outstanding deposit. And now we need to subtotal. Subtotal, we saw that before when we filled out a deposit slip. That means to stop where we're at and add up everything we have so far. So far, we have our balance on our bank statement of 75, and we have our outstanding deposit of 30. Add the two together, and our subtotal ends up being $105. Below the subtotal, we have a place to list any outstanding checks. We had two. We had one check in the amount of $23.11, and we had our second check and that was in the amount of $50. Below that, total outstanding checks. So we're going to total the two checks that we had. So take our $23.11, add it to our $50. So our total outstanding checks ends up being $73.11. What do we do with next? We're going to take our subtotal right above that, which was $105. We're going to subtract our outstanding checks, which was $73.11. When we do that, 105 minus 7311 leaves us with $31.89. Notice the two columns. The column on the left has an ending register balance of $31.89. The column on the right has a bank statement balance of $31.89. These two numbers match. We have now balanced our checkbook. So after watching this video, you should now understand how important it is to balance your checkbook. You should know the difference between an outstanding check and an outstanding deposit. And you've now balanced your checkbook. You got it, dude.